they have built their empire by exploiting their children. So I am not a fan. I don't care for Austin or Catherine. They need to protect the children. The children aren't ever really considered. They don't have consent. Their um, privacy is being invaded and they're just pretty much forced to do this job. I just think they have like really bad morals and they'll do whatever the hell they have to do to get on top. Um, Catherine, like she just has like, the same mindset and mentality of them of like using people. It's not a coincidence that you're watching this video. It's not a coincidence. Catherine McBroom, also known as Catherine Pays, is a social media star who has long been overshadowed by her partner and YouTube co-star, Austin McBroom, for his shady behavior and, let's just say, eccentric personality. But many people have wondered, is Catherine just as bad as Austin McBroom, or is she also caught up in his web of lies? Who is Catherine McBroom behind the camera, and why has she taken part in broadcasting her family and children to the entire world? Catherine McBroom, Austin's scam accomplice. Hi friends or internet acquaintances, welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel covering influencers and influencer scams. Today's video covering Catherine McBroom of the Ace family and her many shady businesses and scams is another video on a series that I'm doing on my channel covering influencers and the many scams that various influencers participate in. If you have a suggestion on who I should cover next, definitely comment down below. And if you saw my last video on Austin McBroom, Catherine's partner, then yes, I am filming two videos back to back. I'm eight months pregnant and just am too tired, don't have the energy to make it look like I'm not filming back to back. So here we are. And besides, I just thought I'd keep it real since we're, we're family here. Just kidding. I hate when YouTubers call their viewers family. It just feels very gross and manipulative to me. Hey, hey, family. 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 Yeah. Ew. Anyways, let's talk about the Ace family. Catherine McBroom is the mother of the Ace family, one of the most, if not the most, popular family vlogging channels on YouTube. Many people have criticized the Ace family for their many scams and shady businesses, primarily at the hands of Austin McBroom, the father of the Ace family. But a lot of people feel that Catherine McBroom is just as guilty as Austin in a lot of these shady businesses, if not just completely completely complicit of all of it. Um. So I thought Catherine McBroom deserved her own video, though maybe shorter than Austin McBroom's because there's, he just, there's, there's a lot of scams that Austin McBroom has been involved in. Like, you guys got scammed? And if you haven't seen my first video where I cover that, Definitely check that out. Before getting into this video, I wanna put out a quick disclaimer. This video is not made to villainize anyone or talk about every single wrong thing they've ever done ever. The main purpose of videos in this series is just to cover the business side or the shady business side of being an influencer and the ways that a lot of influencers abuse their power to scam their fans. So hopefully this video can be enlightening, informative, and help more people avoid scams. If you like videos like these and haven't subscribed yet, then definitely subscribe down below if you want to. And if you like this video itself, then give it a like also if you want to. And now let's get into the video. I wanted to apologize for this video taking so long to post. I'm not really sure if anyone was waiting for a second part, but if you were, once again, I'm sorry that it took so long. I actually gave birth. My baby was born on August 26th and I took some time to kind of focus on my family for a little bit, which sort of leads right into this video theme of family and the exploitation of family. So let's get into that. So, who is Catherine McBroom? I always say there's a powerful woman behind Austin and Ace family. You're a bulldog. You're not just a woman. You're a machine gun. You're a powerhouse. Thank you. Know? you. 
Catherine is a famous and successful influencer with millions of followers on her own social media platforms alongside the millions of followers that she's accumulated through her involvement in the Ace family. Catherine McBroom speaks English, Spanish, and French, which I thought was pretty cool. Hailing from Quebec, Catherine is trilingual, being fluent in both English, French, as well as her parents' native Spanish. And apparently even spent a year in Shanghai at one point in her life teaching English, Spanish, and French. Also, apparently, Catherine dated Michael B. Jordan at one point. I was just seeing a ton of articles on that when researching for this video, and um, good for her. I mean, that's, that's a... Uh definitely an accomplishment. <laughs> I don't know. But there's very, very little information on much of Catherine's past, and much of it is a complete mystery. Catherine Pace was born on August 24, 1990 in Montreal, Quebec. While her birth certificate lists her name as Dolores, well, she has stated that she has gone by her middle name Catherine practically her entire life. Catherine later relocated to Los Angeles, finding acting work in small budget indie films, such as You Can't Have It, as well as the horror film Lillian's Brood. <laughs> Catherine grew up in Montreal, Canada, and started modeling and working consistently at the age of 16. There have also been a ton of other rumors and allegations about Catherine's past, alleging that she was once an escort. There's really no definitive proof out there that shows that she was an escort, so. I like to focus my content on mainly bad business decisions and actions that could directly cause harm to others, and I try my best not to heavily speculate on anyone's personal life. I've seen a lot of people online criticize Catherine for hanging out with celebrities and partying years ago, leading many to believe that she was once an escort. But to me, not only is there such little evidence to really say that she was or wasn't an escort, but it also feels like such an irrelevant thing to bring up or be upset with her for, because no one has come out and claimed that in her younger years, Catherine caused harm to them. And so if it was just partying and being young and reckless, I don't think we should hold her so harshly to that personally just because everyone changes grows and evolves and there are much more serious and harmful things that she should be held accountable for that's just my personal input on the matter and it's kind of up to you how you want to feel on that whole situation so how did austin and Catherine meet they met at a party so we ran into each other at a party had a first date at nobu he texted me and he was like do you like sushi and I, I said no, because I don't like sushi. He's like, oh, well, we, we, uh, I made a date at Nobu started dating, and then got pregnant. In 2015, the couple received the surprise of a lifetime. Now Austin, he was finishing his final year at East Washington when Catherine discovered she was eight weeks pregnant. It's not really that interesting of a story, no matter how interesting and unique they try to make it seem. I remember getting home and I was like, wow, I came, I went out of my comfort zone and I went out with this guy and I actually really had a good time. And I, and I came home and I was kind of like happy. I was like, oh, okay, cool. After Catherine got pregnant, Austin was trying to make his basketball dreams work but decided to take time off and try this social media thing with a couple's prank channel. The pranksters blew up online after Austin staged a gag where he would pretend that he scratched his father's car. What happened next will involve a ripped shirt. Boss, come on. Ah. Hey, we can get it, Damn. And surprisingly, the internet decided it didn't already have enough couples prank family channels. And soon after, their YouTube channel blew up and became the Ace Family. You're back in the kitchen. Basically, by posting this video that was titled Working at a Restaurant for 24 Hours, it seemed like Catherine and Austin were mocking or making light of working class struggles. The main thing I wanted to touch on in this video regarding criticisms of Catherine is something that I didn't really go into that much in my video on Austin, but something that's really important to this fuller picture of the Ace Family and the Ace Family shady businesses, and that's the exploitation of children in family vlog channels. There's been a lot of criticism and just general concerns lately for the ways that a lot of family YouTubers and vloggers exploit their children. Who is protecting these kids? Yeah. At the end of the day, like seriously, genuinely, like obviously like as a parent, you're gonna be protective of your kid, but like who is there advocating for, for the, the kids? kids? There's no one. 
And not I was, not no in one. the YouTube space. Not in the YouTube space. There's, There's no, no one, one in the there. YouTube space. The entire concept of family vlogs is basically capitalizing off of showcasing the lives of your very, very young children and basically making money off of your children and the way that your children live. <laughs> So like, comment, share, and subscribe. And like me and my beautiful family always say, we'll be back with more, with more videos. Yeah. Peace. Go ahead. I feel like as she, you know, was growing up and she was so used to having the camera on her, it was almost like she was natural. She loved doing it. And I feel like that is such a huge asset to our channel. If Elle didn't like being in front of the camera, she was like, oh, we would not like be running, family. Like if she was running away and she wasn't like, you know, interacting, we would not be the A family. No, we wouldn't, 100%. It would never be the same effect. Yeah. Every single important moment in a child's life is being documented and shared with literally millions. There's really nothing private in our lives anymore. Like as much as we want certain things to be private, it's just not possible because we have to film everything. It can be stressful sometimes because like, we want to feel safe. We want to feel like we're at home, but then we have to film in our home because our home is our office. If we don't have anything to show, then there's no content. Which means Ace Family won't be having any videos. So it's, it's interesting to think about. And so many people have wondered the long-term effects of turning someone's childhood into entertainment for the masses. There is a time from probably 14 years old to 22 where I couldn't leave the house without, you know, without paparazzi, without mm. just hordes of people anywhere I went, any a grocery store or, you know, wherever. I mean, I, I don't think young people should be allowed to be famous. Like right. if there's somebody who could come in and say, no, they can't, this is, they're not mentally capable of handling this. I think that should happen. We've seen the effect of young child actors and the child actor to train wreck pipeline, which there are great videos on. I narrowly survived the toddler to train wreck pipeline. The toddler to train wreck pipeline is a notorious and thriving industrial complex around child entertainers. As someone who lived it and witnessed thousands endure alongside me, I can attest that what is missing from the pipeline narrative are clear action plans for intervention, long-term prevention, and accountability from studios, agencies, and guardians. But even in the world of child acting, a child goes to a set, shows up, films something, and then goes home. Imagine the effect if your set is your everyday life and that you're always having to perform 24 seven. That has to be a very confusing thing for a young child. On top of that, there aren't very many laws and regulations for family vloggers and child YouTubers. The Hollywood industry has strict rules to ensure that child actors will be compensated and the money that they make will be saved for them when they reach adulthood. There's like these very, very strict guidelines for kids in like traditional Hollywood world. But now that YouTube's coming up and like it's becoming its own thing, in this social media world, when are the no things going to be? Yeah, when are the when are the guidelines going to start appearing for kids? I started making money with Disney when I was 16, and there's a law called Guggen Law that protects minors from their parents spending all their money. But those same laws don't necessarily exist in the realm of YouTube. So a lot of family vloggers could basically exploit the lives of their children, capitalize off of that, and not save any of it for their children, the main reason why they're getting all this money and success in the first place. Instead of saving that money that they're making off of their children, they might instead spend that on um, lavish mansions and fancy cars for themselves. Hmm. Interesting. You know what my biggest pet peeve is when people say, oh, they, they just care about money. If that were the case, we wouldn't have started doing YouTube because when you first start doing YouTube, you don't actually get paid anything until you do it for a while and, and you work hard at it and there's a lot of different factors. Like, we didn't know we were going to be big. We didn't know we were going to be successful. We did it because we enjoyed doing it. It was our passion. <gasps> Literally the one that I've been loving for so long. Thank you. Oh my god, please tell me you like it. Catherine and Austin have used their children to sell their merch, their apps, sponsorships, and most notably, their brand, Silly Juice. You ready to go see your juice? Their children are basically child actors, models, and brand ambassadors without having any of those titles or paychecks. Well, do you like doing YouTube? Yeah. 
Austin and Catherine are using their own children to target and promote their content and businesses to other children. For example, their merch has back to school sales and they're selling a children's juice. Their main target demographic isn't adults, it's children. There are laws and regulations on advertising to children in traditional media, but not a lot of it has been enforced on YouTube. But I will say it's definitely evident that YouTube cares about this issue and has been implementing more and more into the platform to ensure the safety of child viewers, especially since that's where a lot of their biggest ad revenue comes from. It's also important to note that the Ace family is using their own children as child actors and stars, but without any of the regulations in place of traditional media. Oh, no, for us, isn't really a thing anymore. You have to be quick, and it's just chaos because there's one person asks for a photo, and we take the photo, talk to them for a little bit, and then someone else comes, and then someone else comes. It becomes a production just to go yeah. anywhere. Yes, it sucks to say that because we have kids. We want them to be able to go out and experience the world. Meet people, right. As messed up as the child acting industry is, there are a lot of rules and regulations in place to make sure children aren't being used or abused. For example, if a child is working a certain amount of hours on set, there has to be a teacher there to ensure the child is still able to get schooling done. And no matter what, a certain percentage of what the child makes has to be placed in a savings account with the child's name that can only be accessed by the child when the child turns 18. That was a lot of saying the child. A child. None of these things are in place for children of family vloggers. So basically, due to the current laws and regulations or lack thereof on social media platforms, it's entirely possible for the adults in a family vlog channel to work their children over a reasonable amount, not ensure they're going to school or getting any education, and then use all of the revenue created on themselves and their lifestyle and not save any of it for their children, even though their children are working their entire childhoods. We need to protect the children and that's really why I go against some of these like family channels because the children aren't ever really considered. They don't have consent, their um, privacy is being invaded and they're just pretty much forced to do this job, this career and being a little kid on YouTube is a career because you have to be on camera and like you guys who say oh no like the children they aren't working they're just living their lives and being filmed like Elle has to go through this every single day where she's posing for the camera, smiling for the camera, getting ready for this. Mommy and daddy are arguing, but she just knows she has to film. Like, it is a job at the end of the day. Hey, it's Welcome back to our channel, guys. What's going on, everybody? Ooh, ooh, no. Good thing I don't have to know. I'm gonna say it. Good thing I have to be on camera today. Okay. God. Okay. My nerve is fucked up. I'm not gonna film like this. So just go. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Hey, it's Welcome back to our channel, guys. What's going on, Abby? Oh, look at my hair. Good thing I'm not gonna be on camera today. I'm ready. Well, <laughs> he's not coming to get you. Well, Ace family, ready? Okay, okay. Well, Ace family, today was a success. Was a success. Hey, Ace, happy to no. So, um,. So, so with that being said, so with that being said, family vlog channels are painted to be happy, endearing looks inside the life of a beautiful family. But the reality of family vlogging channels is much more dark and sinister and concerning for the children. And I really think a lot more needs to be done to ensure the safety of the children involved. I don't want it to ever seem like I'm judging a parent for the choices that the parent makes. So this isn't me judging Austin and Catherine for their choices in parenting. This is a real issue I think needs to be addressed more that extends beyond parenting into the business of exploiting children for profit, which has become so prevalent on social media. That's a thing I have to know about the Ace family. Whenever you watch a video of the Ace family parents showing off their insane amount of wealth and material material items and goods, all I can think when watching videos like those is that that was their family's money, their children's money that they're spending on themselves, that their children are helping them make. And I have to wonder how much of it they're saving for their children. But alas. So even if Catherine McBroom is the lesser of two evils compared to Austin McBroom, she's still actively participating in a system where her children are being put on display and she's profiting off of that and spending that money on a lavish lifestyle for herself.
Whenever Austin McBroom has a controversy, Catherine is also right by his side and defending him. That he's gonna use the hundred thousand to wow. I trust him in that money. Oh Which I can see as being a really hard position to be in. Your partner is getting into a lot of controversies. Do you publicly disavow him or do you stick by him? I mean, that's a hard position to be in regardless. But a lot of people have taken her loyalty as also complacency and also support in a lot of the problematic actions and things that Austin has done, which we talked about in my last video. People also criticize Catherine for sticking by Austin after numerous cheating allegations. There are plenty of accusations out there of Austin McBroom cheating on Catherine for quite some time now. And I am here to let you know, Catherine, that that is actually true. Austin is cheating on you or has cheated on you with my friend. Which is also something I briefly touched on in my last video. But something I want to reiterate is we really don't know the conditions of their relationship, whether or not they have an open relationship. And Catherine is an adult who is allowed to make her own decisions on whether or not she stays in a relationship. I don't think that's something for the general public to judge or condemn her for. But regardless, the most important thing to note is through all of the scams and shady businesses of the Ace family, Catherine has stood right next to Austin supporting and promoting all of them. She's been involved in these businesses, she's had a voice, and she's used her platforms to promote them. I'm so excited to be going into a store right now that has our product, Silly Juice, in 600 pavilions, Vons, and Albertsons in SoCal. So exciting, look how amazing this looks. And when people end up feeling scammed or taken advantage of, Catherine never speaks up. She never apologizes, and she continues to be just as complacent in all of it as Austin McBroom. You can never know the truth of someone just off of what they put out on the internet. I okay, never wanted to be famous. And I still don't see myself as famous. Mm -hmm. um, I've always known that I was going to be a voice, and I always knew I wanted to be inspirational sure. and help people. And and this this lifestyle that we have now was never in the in the cards for me. Mm -hmm. I never I never imagined it. So the main question becomes: What are Catherine's true intentions, and can she rightfully claim naivety to all the scams and shady business practices that Austin has done, especially when she heavily promotes all of them? Finally, finally have launched our juice company today, guys. You don't understand. It's available right now. Literally just launched go on sillyjuice.com and order your first case very important to not only download the ace family app but to also turn on your push notifications what we're gonna put on our sections of the app we're gonna do that later on we're gonna start off with l if you download the ace family app we truly know that you are truly part of the ace family some believe at best Catherine is a naive bystander, unrightfully caught up in all of Austin's problems, and at worst Catherine is complicit and complacent to the actions of Austin McBroom. But what if the truth is very different than that? Both of these narratives paint a picture of Catherine being, let's be honest, unintelligent, as if she's clueless or vapid. Um, sometimes I'm not very good with my words. I'm actually very good with my words when I'm alone and I'm not actually filming, but sometimes I get a little nervous. So I don't get like what I really want to say out. But watch any interview she's done and quickly you can see that she's very smart, well-spoken, and understands the business side of YouTube very well. People don't realize that talent does matter. When they watch our videos, that. they do not realize that there's a lot behind what brought you to that point. When you start YouTube, you don't want to intimidate people. You know, you want to be able to be more personal. You sure. want to be able to be more natural, natural, engaging. Exactly. So I had to kind of change that part of myself because I know that that's part of what I do for a living. That's just part of making the, um, you know, our content more real and more, you know, relatable. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's all about ratings. It's all about what people want to see Views, and you have to sure. give them what they want to see. I mean, Catherine speaks three languages, which is something that I don't think I'd ever be capable of doing. We speak Spanish, uh, English, obviously, and, and, and French as well. I do, yeah. You do That's as well. Yeah. 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 She was able to make a decent amount of money at a very young age, enough to where she had a strong savings, super, super young. So I was like, damn, we got to put food, food on the table. Yeah, what were you financially during all this? 
It was tough. It was tough. It was well, tough. Well, luckily, I've worked hard my entire life and had so much in savings that I was like, you know what? We got this. Like, we're gonna like see what happens. Catherine is extremely smart, and I would say from my perspective, a thousand times smarter than Austin. We love a hashtag girl boss. So the question for me becomes no longer how naive to all of this is she, but actually how much of a role is she playing in the first place? She seemed to know all the ins and outs of putting together the basketball charity event. A lot that goes into events, I would love to make a video and like more in depth of what actually goes on to doing an event of this magnitude. Um, you shouldn't say that because they're gonna be saying, yeah, do that, Catherine, we wanna see numbers and charts. She's constantly defending her husband's actions as if she knows much more about what's really going on. A conference, we've always said it's entertainment, like this is for people's entertainment, like this is all like fun, it's supposed yeah. to be like exciting. Yeah. And so I just get annoyed because I'm like, you literally, all you were doing was just like giving people entertainment and this yeah. guy, your opponent, wants to push you. And she seems fairly business savvy. So even though Austin is the one that does most of the talking and paints himself as the face of the Ace family, maybe Catherine is actually the one behind the scenes running the show. That's just a very overthought theory on my part. Either way, even if Catherine wasn't involved in any of the shady business practices of the Ace family in general, the app scam, the website scam, the charity events, the silly juice mold, all of that. And then I don't know what the fuck that mold came there. Even if she wasn't involved in any of it, does that absolve her of everything? For example, the Ace Club was a situation where fans subscribed to the Ace Club website to support the Ace family and get more Ace family content for a monthly fee of $20. But the website was not working well and it did not deliver what was promised. And the fans were still charged monthly even after they canceled their subscriptions. Fans were voicing their concern online about the Ace Club because the club was no longer showing up online. The link wasn't working, logins weren't working, everything was down, and the Ace family never spoke up about this. Why is this problematic? Well, there are tons of people paying $20 a month for this subscription and the website isn't working. Catherine knew this was happening and even spoke in videos about the Ace Club changes. So the next thing that we wanted to catch you up on is Ace Club. A lot of you guys have been asking about Ace Club. We recently took the site down for maintenance. And so we've been listening to your guys' feedback and decided to make it a little faster mm -hmm. and change some things up so it looks a lot better. So Catherine herself knew their fans weren't getting what was owed to them and were basically being scammed as Austin admitted later on. Some of you guys have asked what has happened with the Ace Club when we were doing exclusive content with the Ace Club. Um, and unfortunately, the people that we partnered with in that adventure, um, they end up, I don't really like to talk negatively, but they just weren't good partners. Um, they end up unfortunately scamming us. Um, and it kind of like hurt us in a way because in reality, like you guys got scammed. Um, and what did Catherine do when this was happening? Absolutely nothing. She didn't speak out about it. She didn't make sure the site was shut down, even though her face was all over it, which is definitely considered an endorsement of the product. And instead, she remained silent and complicit, just like in every single one of the Ace Family businesses that her face has been on that have gone awry. To me, even if Austin made himself out to be the leader of the family and their business endeavors, Catherine is just as responsible. She's an adult who took part in and endorsed these businesses and did very little when time and time again, they all went terribly wrong. Currently, the Ace family and both Catherine and Austin are facing multiple lawsuits that seem to pile up more and more, and many can't see a way that they'll be able to financially recover from this. I am never going to financially recover from this. Yet Catherine and Austin continue to post about their lavish lifestyle and seemingly remain unbothered by it all. According to Financial, the Ace family's net worth reached 20 million in 2020. But this net worth wasn't gained just through their monetization on their YouTube platform. Most of their wealth is attributed to their business dealings and merch sales, sponsorships, and ad-affiliated revenue. So reportedly, all of the shady business 
peace deals that Catherine and Austin have been involved in have attributed to the massive amounts of wealth that they've amounted to today. But how long until it all comes crashing down? It has to get to a point where the criticism becomes loud enough that they can't keep getting away with the same things again and again and again. And it seems that the general public has reached a point where they're just done with the Ace family scams. And on top of that, the recent influx in lawsuits may mean that them being able to do the same scams over and over again unchecked is coming to an end. But recently, Catherine has had a scam or a shady business of her very own. Earlier this year, Catherine launched her own skincare brand called 1212 Gateway. Um, I really started to dive into the skincare and I was like, I'm gonna do it. The beauty inside. Share with the world your inner light. And the launch of this brand ended in fans being really, really upset. I decided to try out Catherine McBroom Pays skincare line 1212 Gateway. I'm breaking out. I used exactly the three steps last night and then I woke up with this. So here is what my skin looks like after using 1212 Gateway for seven days. And for that reason, I don't think I'm ever gonna be repurchasing from this brand. One thing that I did not like is that it just shipped like this. There was no protective layer, no, you know, type of wrap. I just don't get the best vibe off of that. When I first opened it, the carton was ripped right here. And this two were like this. So I was like, I wish I would have spent more time in kind of securing the package. Was this another Ace Family scam? From the jump, there was a lot of false advertising and I even fell a victim to it. For this gift set, it should have said travel set or mini gift set. When I opened the box, my first impression, my second impression, I was like, I paid $100 for sample sizes? Oh, uh, really? Uh, that really, that kind of like, pissed me off a little. Fans complained that when they ordered from 1212 Gateway, their products arrived faulty or damaged, and that when they tried to get help from the company, they were ignored or given little compensation. So many customers are online upset because they have ordered from her skincare line weeks ago and they haven't heard anything. Here are some comments complaining about the orders. This person wrote, third restock, but orders from the launch haven't even shipped yet. Um, my order still hasn't arrived. I ordered on the first release. I'm really disappointed. Products arriving damaged and faulty. What does this remind us of? Literally every single Ace Family business out there that has ever existed ever. When people tried to buy from Ace Club, their products never arrived. When people bought Silly Juice, the products arrived broken and damaged. And yet again, when people ordered from 1212 Gateway, 1212 Gateway. 1212 gateway. Hmm, interesting. Their products arrived broken and damaged. Why do you not learn? If you have done a business endeavor where people complained that they didn't receive product or it was broken and damaged, you think you would learn how to fix that after the third or fourth business. Why is this literally the fifth business that they've done where the same thing has happened? Do they not learn or do they just not care whatsoever? So this is what some people had to say about 1212 Gateway. On their Instagram, one user wrote, their resolution to my damaged $100 order was to send a $20 gift card. Save your bank, y'all. Another person added, Catherine's whole skincare is also a scam. Why aren't you replying to people who got broken products and to those who haven't received their products? Yet as a business, don't you have any responsibility towards your customers, AKA your subscribers? You are having a meal on your plate because they effing trusted you and paid you. Another person even made a TikTok showing their broken and damaged skincare products where there was one product with a large black hair on the bottle and the other their products had like dirty marks all over them. And here's what some people had to say on Twitter about 1212 Gateway. Jokes on you if you buy anything from internet slash YouTube slash complete strangers off the internet and expect quality. Stop commenting on their pages and start commenting on your own self-worth. 
<laughs> that's brutal. Go to Target for moisturizer. It's honestly not that deep. It's moisturizer. But it honestly makes me sad because I could see how fans would want to support 1212 Gateway. The launch of the brand was kind of really cool. It looked unique. It looked professional. The photo shoot was awesome. There weren't really any major red flags. And I think since a lot of people saw Catherine as not Austin or better than Austin, a lot of people had higher hopes for this company than the Ace Family companies of the past, since it seemed to be just Catherine's thing, not Austin's thing. And so it makes me sad that it ended up being the same story as just all the other Ace Family business endeavors. Like, we were rooting for you. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! Buy skincare from established, trusted brands instead of some random influencer who has no experience or knowledge in the industry. LOL, is there literally anything her and Austin can get right? Which, legit, like, why is this the same thing over and over and over again? It shouldn't be that hard to just come out with a legitimate functioning company. I'm not going to buy 1212 Gateway at shiz not good business. And then another person said, nobody is shocked. So overall, this entire 1212 gateway situation has me wondering a few things. The first thing is, why do the Ace family members continue to make the same mistakes in business over and over and over again? And second off, how did it get to this point? Well, it seems a lot of information on the inner workings of 1212 Gateway came to light in a lawsuit where Catherine's business partner is suing her for the way that 1212 Gateway was handled. Catherine McBroom is in big trouble. She is currently being sued by her own company for screwing them over. This $60 million business has gone down the drain and the parent company of 1212 Gateway is blaming Catherine. Catherine's brand is getting sued by Catherine's business partners, TBL Cosmetics. Catherine McBroom is getting sued by her business partners, TBL Cosmetics, on her skincare line, 1212 Gateway. Apparently, TBL TBL Cosmetics was supposed to run all of the ins and outs of the skincare brand. The Shopify, the social medias, fulfilling the orders, all of that was supposed to be handled by TBL Cosmetics and Catherine was only supposed to promote the skincare brand. But once Catherine saw all the positive response the promotion of the brand was getting, she wanted that success all for herself and hijacked all administrative access to anything that had to do with 1212 Gateway. And allegedly, according to the TBL Cosmetics lawsuit, has been holding administrative access hostage. She allegedly changed all the passwords for 1212 Gateway and has been trying to completely edge out TBL Cosmetics. 1212 Gateway was a scam from the jump. Just to give you guys some background on why TBL would be suing Catherine McBroom, they're pretty much claiming that she has been trying to kick them out of the business business when she's in fact been the problem from the start. So between TBL Cosmetics and Catherine, who is at fault for the horrible handling of the brand and the mismanagement of the product? TBL Cosmetics claims that Catherine is too incompetent to completely run 1212 Gateway. So according to them, all of this that has happened has been her fault. Yikes. TBL Cosmetics has claimed that under Catherine's watch, 1212 Gateway was not shipping things out on time, nor properly managing customer service. And apparently, Catherine even involved Austin's dad in the business too, even though he has no experience in working a skincare business. Catherine has also not been attending board meetings and instead sending in a representative who has told TBL Cosmetics that she wants them out of the business completely. And TBL Cosmetics claims that because of this, they have suffered millions and millions in losses. So the lawyers did their math and it looks like they're gonna have about a $16.5 million loss in revenue. So that's how much money that Catherine has lost the brand. So this whole thing turned into a complete mess. Bottom line, it's clear that Catherine did not handle the business well at all. It makes me sad because it's
because it seemed like 1212 Gateway was off to such a good start with a professional business partner who knew how to run the ins and outs of skincare. But it seems that according to the account of TBL Cosmetics, Catherine got greedy and wanted all of the success for herself, only to completely ruin everything. Though of course we don't know the full story and a lot of this is just from the account of TBL Cosmetics, a lot of it does make sense when you look at the fact that 1212 Gateway is running into the exact same problems as every single other Ace Family business scheme. 1212 Gateway's formula was also allegedly a copycat formula of another indie skincare line. Her body is a skincare line under TBL Cosmetics that has nearly the exact same formulation as 1212 Gateway, and the website and products even look identical. Catherine promoted the brand as if it was a labor of love that she studied and helped put together herself. Um, I really started to dive into the skincare and I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, I don't care what anyone thinks. I started research and development. I started looking into how I can make a team, how I can make this happen, because at that point I felt like, oh my God, I am under a microscope. I mean, anything that I do right now has such a huge responsibility on me because I have millions of people that can see this and, and try it if they wanted to. And it was just so nerve wracking to me. And I just felt like, oh my God, I need to make this a good product. Like I really need to spend my time and I don't care if it's gonna take me years, I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna live and breathe this and I'm gonna try every product on the market, everything that people are raving about liking, I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna see why people like it and I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna just do what it takes. But in reality, on the outside, it just looks like it was a copy and paste of another brand that already existed. But it's hard to say the reasoning for that and whether or not it's just that they are being produced by the same manufacturer. I'm not entirely educated on the ins and outs of skincare to definitively say anything on that. A, well, I guess now former friend of Catherine's recently also accused her of copying her business ideas, which regarding the track record of the Ace Family business endeavors wouldn't really surprise me, but also it's sort of a she said, she said situation, or I guess he said, she said, because the husband of Catherine's former friend is the person who accused Catherine of copying her. He claimed in an Instagram story that the recent crystal pop-up shop Catherine did and other things were all Amanda's ideas. There's not a ton of hard evidence or proof that Catherine copied besides what the friend's husband has claimed. But also, they aren't the only people who have accused the Ace family of doing this. On top of that, the mother of the Brand Fam YouTube channel also spoke out about members of the McBroom family having a pattern of copying and stealing and how Catherine just really isn't that supportive of a friend. This guy hit me up to collab. We started texting and we were supposed to do a video together and he's like okay like what are some of your ideas so i gave him three ideas very specific ideas and he didn't reply to my text after that like completely ghosted me and then like two days later he did the same two days later did the same exact video idea that i gave him title thumbnail everything and like this family like this whole like all these people are known to be like rats and just kind of like do what they got to do to get ahead of everybody honestly like the entire mcbroom family I just think they have like really bad morals and they'll do whatever the hell they have to do to get on top and then when they don't need you anymore, like when you're not convenient to them, they, they just cut you right off and I think that's just like super, super f***ing to do. Um, Catherine, like she's super sweet, like nothing against her personally, but I just think like she just has like the same mindset and mentality of them of like using people. Um, she like hit me up a while ago when her skincare line launched and she wanted to send me a PR package and I said of course, I put it on my story amazing products she honestly put like so much energy and time into that and it really showed and i was genu genuinely like really happy for her so then like weeks go by and i needed help like contacting somebody on instagram and i was like hey would you happen to know anybody just because you know she has like a shit ton of followers i'm sure she has a contact over on instagram and she kind of beat around the bush didn't want to give it to me Weeks go by, I asked her again, beat around the bush again, didn't want to give it to me. And then I asked her if I can send her something from my new clothing store. I was like, I would love to send you and like the girl something. And she just didn't hit me back up. But like other times I would DM her, like she would reply back to me perfectly fine. But then it's like, you want me to promote your product. You wanted me to promote your product, you know, as a favor, it's beneficial to you. But then when I expect like the same support back, like 
I couldn't get it. On the note of other Ace family members and the whole Ace family having sort of a bad image, I wanted to talk briefly about a video that just came out regarding Shyla Walker, who is Landon McBroom's ex. And the whole situation is really upsetting. From the account of Shyla Walker, it sounds like her relationship with Landon was riddled with a lot of abuse, manipulation, and shady tactics in order to take a lot of Shyla's money. And after watching that video, Shyla mentions the word evil a lot. I felt the tears flowing and I was like, you are an evil person. And I could see the evil and the anger and the resentment for me in his face. It didn't even look like human. And um, I felt like, and I just went to my car and just and I have to say that is now at the forefront of my mind when thinking of the Ace family and primarily the McBrooms is the word evil. And I'll be linking that video down below so that you guys can watch it and support Shyla because the whole situation that was she was involved in just sounds awful. So overall, Catherine McBroom is an adult who knows exactly what she's doing and has participated in and even led the way in all of the Ace family shady businesses and scams. My instinct is to say that I hope that Catherine's intentions are good, but unfortunately her actions have been consistent in showing that she just doesn't really care at the end of the day. As I said in my video on Austin, I hope that she stops doing this same type of shady business deals and I hope that she moves forward and works with legitimate businesses. It just makes me sad when it looks like she was going to work with a legitimate business but got a little bit too greedy at the expense of her fans and customers. <laughs> After filming this video, Catherine has spoken out and denounced all of the rumors of financial trouble and allegations against Austin McBroom regarding the Social Gloves boxing event. Okay, Catherine, there's a lot of rumors that uh, your house is getting foreclosed. What do you have to say about that? It's not true. It's not true? Yeah, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Catherine claims that James Harden isn't really suing Social Gloves or the Ace family, and that Live X Live, the company that's battling it out against Social Gloves at the moment, is paying people to create false stories. She also called them criminals and said it's not an opinion, it's a fact, which is going to be definitely um, very useful in Live X Live's defamation suit. When she was asked how she felt about the house being foreclosed rumor, she said it's such a blessing. All the false narratives and un true rumors have been a blessing in disguise. They made me appreciate how blessed I am and get closer to God. I feel so alive. Which is, I mean, great for her to turn a negative situation into some sort of positive thing, I guess. But um, basically, she's saying that every single allegation that has been coming out are all lies, not true at all. And um, yeah, I mean, time will tell, I guess. Hey, Catherine, um, there's a lot of losses going on. Do you have anything to say about that? Um, there honestly isn't. Okay, one more question. Uh, Tana and Trisha are always coming up with cheating rumors against Austin. Do you have any anything to say about I'm that? I'm sorry, I don't know who those people are. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, take care. Recently, news came out that the Ace family home is going to be auctioned off, and in response, Catherine is still denying this and had this to say. Someone asked, your house is being put up for auction. Why are you guys acting like nothing? It cut off, but I'm guessing acting like nothing is happening or nothing is going on is what the person said. And to this, Catherine responded, No, my love, I have not spoken about any of this publicly, but if I did, I think most of the hateful people that wish us pain and failure would feel very stupid for ever assuming the worst. It's just not fair how people can just assume that I don't pay my bills or something. That's so far from my character and much more. I think people forget that we built our house and that we are in a pandemic. Most cities are closed and unable to get permits, etc. Not everything in the world has to do with money. Many people work from home now. It's like we are living in a different world due to this pandemic. Things happen, but not for the reasons people wish. The saddest part of this is there are actual people losing their homes with nowhere to go. And to see people make fun of the idea of losing a home is sick. Wish people well. First off, I definitely want to say it's not right or okay to make fun of anyone for losing a house or to make it into some sort of joke. I think it's important to talk about in the greater context of learning how to manage money and not, you know, 
exploit people and take advantage of people and end up having that kind of come back to you tenfold, which from the outside looking in seems to be the McBroom family's case, but we really don't know. There could be more to the story and Catherine did bring up an interesting point where I wonder if the foreclosure or auction of their house has to do with not being able to get the right permits or something strange and off like that associated with COVID, the builders involved, all of that. Recently, Catherine also announced that she's launching her own YouTube channel. I could just sit here and talk to you guys about life. Like, there's just so much life going on in everyone's world. Just so much going on. And I wish I could just... I'm just gonna spit it out. Catherine is starting her own channel. From a business perspective, this is smart on her part. At this point, Austin has really tainted the Ace Family name brand. You look up Ace Family and tons of videos pop up talking about his involvement in scams and just how shady and shitty of a person he is. Catherine starting her own channel could be a great way for her to, branding wise and financially, create distance between her public image and Austin's. Hey Catherine, so the fans wanna know why did you decide to start your own family channel? People are saying you guys were getting separated but you came on and said my, that's not my true. Own family channel? I mean, your, your own channel, not oh. own family channel. Um, I've been thinking about doing that for like five, six years now. Okay. Yeah. Are you gonna be dropping any videos soon or? Um, yes, very I also wonder how much their finances are completely intertwined. Will Catherine face financial backlash and repercussions for all the lawsuits against Austin McBroom and the Ace Family business? Or will she walk away unscathed and be able to build up her own separate brand? And so with all of like this knowledge, knowledge. and this wisdom that I feel like I've gained over the years and in my life, I think I'm finally ready to really talk about these things. Um, on, on my own channel. I do hope Catherine is the lesser of two evils, but it's impossible to say at the moment considering her involvement in so many shady things. And what concerns me the most about the future of Catherine's channel is a video she made on the Ace Family channel titled We Need to Talk, where to test the waters, Catherine makes a solo video and talks about a lot of things. I'm saying, and, and I'm thinking it in my head, but my, my, con my higher self conscious is speaking for me, but I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, am I a freaking mermaid right now? This is insane. So I go and I tell Derek who was doing it for me, I go, well, I'm a mermaid. And I go, I live here. And he's like, okay. In that life, I had a trauma with the ocean. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to live in the ocean, but I had no choice because my father in that um, specific lifetime was a king of some sort. In that life, Austin was actually my husband. So it wasn't physically him, but it was his spirit. Austin was my husband, he was a merman. But one of the most notable things she discussed is how she thinks people can reach success. You are so special. You are so, you're such a special person. Like me and you, trust me when I say this, we have so much more in common than you would ever imagine. Like, ah, oh, this is so crazy. Like, it's not coincidence that you're watching this video. It's not coincidence that you're drawn to me in any way or clicking on this video or whatever. It's not a coincidence. Focus on what you want versus what you don't want. Because the more you focus on what you don't want, you're going to attract it. If you live out of fear, you start to attract things that attract fear. And that's how life works. That's how, that's, that's the law. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the way Catherine has been talking about her channel gives me guru vibes. If you're thinking negative thoughts, those are all vibrations. A vibration is, is, is invisible energy. Like her channel is going to become a way to build a brand off of her being a guru and trying to sell courses, books, and other things similar to the way Austin sold a course on how to become a millionaire. But if I was able to maybe spark something in your mind or maybe teach something or maybe relate to you in some way, Oh my god, I'm like, that's all that I need. Maybe I'm too cynical and it's not going to be that, but my feeling is very strong with this prediction. So that's all I have to say for today's video. If you made it this far in the video and haven't subscribed yet, then don't forget to subscribe. I hope everyone's doing well and I'll catch you guys in the next video, whenever that may be. And I hope you guys do well until then. Bye.